The need to move money from place to place, the cost of doing so, the overhead, as you put it, makes me think, believe it or not, of Bitcoin, because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. And then you'll see Bitcoin trading at 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Rick Falkvina does an excellent analysis. He predicts that Bitcoin will capture between 1% and 10% of the global Forex market, which implies a price of between $100,000 to $1 million per Bitcoin. Speaking of the price rising, this is in the next headline here from a hedge funder. Fortress's Novogratz says Bitcoin will be, quote, worth a lot. And this is Michael Novogratz. He's the chief investment officer for Fortress Investment Group, which is a $55 billion hedge fund. And he says, put a little money in Bitcoin, come back in a few years, and it's going to be worth a lot. All right. Well, we became aware of Bitcoin when it was about a dollar a Bitcoin. We recommended it to viewers of Kaiser Report when it was $5 a Bitcoin. And it's been the best performing asset in the world, bar none. But this Fortress uh, gentleman mentions he's a hedge fund and a private equity fund manager, and he understands that Bitcoin is now an asset class. Mm. Stocks, bonds, gold, silver, real estate, Bitcoin. It is an asset class. So every single one of those 10,000 hedge funds in the world who control trillions of dollars will need exposure to Bitcoin if they want to remain competitive. That's the bottom line. So these hedge funds will start nibbling into Bitcoin. If Bitcoin were to achieve the mainstream adoption some believe it is capable of, the implications to retail banking would be seismic, with declining demand for traditional banking services like cash storage, payment, balance checks, international transfers, and a foreign exchange, to name a few. Most of the people who are on the sidelines not buying Bitcoin today will start to buy Bitcoin when it gets over 1,000. Hmm. And then a greater percentage of people will definitely plow into Bitcoin when it starts to get over 10,000. Cybersecurity expert John McAfee joins me now. John, why do you think the word bubble cannot be applied to Bitcoin? Well, first and foremost, Bitcoin is not a fiat currency. <clears throat> it, it costs over a thousand dollars to create a bitcoin today in electricity and computing costs second the value of bitcoin is is linked to the number of users and the number of transactions it is not a speculative investment even though it is being used as such by many people as the bitcoin network grows the value of bitcoin grows as people move into bitcoin for payments and receipts they stop using U.S. dollars, euros, Chinese yuan, which in the long term devalues these currencies. So what you're seeing is more of a currency devaluation than a bubble in Bitcoin. As more people use it, it has more intrinsic value. And again, the cost of producing a Bitcoin increases with the value of the Bitcoin. So this is not something that we're pulling out of thin air. Mm -hmm. This is something that's created with massive amounts of electricity and computing power. Now, John, we've showed our viewers Bitcoin's rise just in the past month, and we can show it to them again if it's up there. But on July 17th, one month ago, you tweeted that Bitcoin's low of 1,800 yesterday simply could not be maintained. In the long term, Bitcoin moves above 500,000 within three years. Bet, you ask? So I ask you, John, do you stand by your statement? I'm Evelyn Risley, technology reporter for The Wall Street Journal, here today with Wences Casares. He is the CEO of Zappo, which is a Bitcoin wallet and Bitcoin vault. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So what type of people do you see investing in Bitcoin? I think we see two very different phenomena going mm -hmm. on. In the developing world, it's average, average people who mm -hmm. just want to put a significant part of their savings into Bitcoin because they trust it more than the local currency or the local banks. In the developed world is more sophisticated investors who are mm -hmm. speculating with a very small percentage of what they have that this may be worth a lot in the future. And even that volatility is still attractive though to people who may be in developing countries where there's a lot of inflation or deflation. So e even kind of pricing in or expecting that volatility you still think that people <coughs> will find it attractive over kind of a long-term horizon. Yeah, people already do find yeah. it attractive in those places because despite the volatility, the volatility is something that you may find in, in a day or in a week, mm -hmm. um, but 
so far, when you look m three, six months in, Bitcoin has been very steadily increasing in value. And that's a better proposition to, to, to most people in those countries than having to suffer the loss in the local currency or risk it in the local bank. So let's, let's make a boat call here. In 10 years, what do you think Bitcoin will be worth? One Bitcoin. Between half a million dollars and a million dollars. 